Just to reiterate uh, again what the Honorable Prime Minister and also Dr. Tundra has been talking about, the importance of this weekend being a weekend of cleaning and also preparations. Uh, and we encourage all Fijians right across uh, our land uh, to be able to use uh, the, that to the maximum effect. Uh, as been alluded to, leptospirosis, typhoid, dengue and diarrheal diseases uh, often quite common, especially after climatic changes and uh, cyclones. We've had a th three uh, so far within this cyclone season, the Tropical Cyclone Herald having passed right through the group. So it is important that uh, we tackle this because we also have COVID-19 uh, that uh, we are also fighting at this uh, time. Uh, and uh, as alluded to the, um, the fever screening uh, teams that are out there in the community, we've already seen more than 330,000 Fijians. They continue to do their work. Uh, they're beginning to uh, uh, continue to find those individuals that uh, may be of concern. And they have been tested and all have been negative. We've also, at the moment, have uh, 300 uh, Fijians in uh, government-designated, funded uh, quarantine facilities. And those uh, do not include those that have uh, left because they've reached their 14th day and have been tested and have been negative and now on home isolation and now quarantine enforcement uh, teams, uh, which are made out of uh, Minister of Health officials and also other stakeholders, including the discipline forces, are actually contacting them and visiting them on a very regular basis. We thank the Honourable Prime Minister for uh, the uh, statement today and also the lifting of some of the restrictions that are in place. Remember, this has been done because of the multiple layers that government has taken in terms of its uh, prevention and protection measures against COVID-19. And those layers uh, have been uh, working uh, to our benefit. But again, the responsibility of everyone is to continue to ensure that uh, despite the lifting of curfew from 8 to 10 p.m., uh, the inter-island uh, uh, movements that now are allowed, the ability to be able to uh, uh, socially gather uh, come next Monday, that we will do so with responsibility. And responsibility making sure that we social distance and also making sure that uh, when one does have any symptom, they are to front up to one of our fever clinics or one of our health centers so that we can be able to see them and proceed and look after them well. I just want to also reiterate that uh, Cluster 1 uh, is all um, well and they are now at home. Also Cluster 4, uh, she's also well and uh, she's also at home. And in uh, general, just to again reiterate that we now have more Fijians who have had COVID-19 who have uh, responded and recovered and have tested negative more than two times, two times or more on the COVID-19 uh, molecular lab uh, testing using RT-PCR than those who actively have still the disease. And it's now more than four to five days. I think it's now nearly the fifth day since we've had our last positive case. And lastly, before we open up to questions, we are also uh, congratulate uh, some of the countries around the world, especially our neighbors, uh, Wale, Australia and New Zealand for the great work that they've been doing They've been flattening the curve, uh, especially Australia and New Zealand, uh, despite uh, the challenges of some of the mortality and mobility that they've had. But to see that they flattened the curve gives us a lot of hope, uh, especially because we have uh, a lot of families in these places. But also, these are the places that we, we normally trade with and we normally work in partnership with. Partnership with and we congratulate them for their hard work. We note with interest that New Zealand, as of yesterday, had no new cases similar to some of the, the data that we've been uh, having here in Fiji over the last uh, few days and weeks uh, until we get a case every now and again. Uh, that's all from the Minister of Health. Is there any questions uh, for the Minister of Health? Uh, Minister Edwin from FPC News, if you could just elaborate, of the uh, 10 cases who have recovered, how many are still admitted in isolation centres and how many have been sent home? We know patient one uh, has been discharged, but if you could elaborate on how many you still have admitted. Thank you. Of the 10 that have uh, recovered, uh, nine of them have actually gone home into home isolation. One of them, uh, the 90 based case, uh, has asked to stay in hospital to serve out that 14-day isolation. And uh, we've been very grateful to have her. Uh, that doesn't change the dynamics of what we need to do. As we all are aware, 
that uh, we've added uh, another caveat in terms of them going home and having another 14 day um, home uh, monitored uh, isolation. Uh, and this is something that uh, we have done uh, as a country because we want to be really sure that uh, those who have recovered and have gone home are completely well before again interacting on a uh, more free scale with the community at large. Um, we also have to note that um, you know that uh, we have this 28-day uh, quarantine uh, that we have in place for those that return back into the country. 14 days, uh, as I've alluded to before, and it's been said in the statements before. 14 days, they get a test. If that's negative, they go home into home isolation. And this is something that's been done because of case, uh, especially case 17 and 18, where there have been more than 14 days before they've tested positive, possibly in their recovery phase, but we're doing it to be uh, extra cautious about what we do. In terms of the uh, scaling back of the curfew hours from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m., obviously as soon as the message goes out, uh, people who have been wanting to sort of have more freedom of movement would do so, and in that light would uh, possibly, it, it is human nature, forget about the restrictions that have been uh, in place. And the advisory that your ministry is giving out in terms of social distancing and what have you, does this pose a risk to all your efforts to try and contain the spread of COVID-19? We've, um, uh, we've, we've looked thoroughly at what uh, we have been doing as a government uh, and also the Minister of Health. Uh, we've been very, uh, lately we've been comfortable uh, with uh, where we are. Uh, remember that we've had occasions where we've had no case for a few days on end before we've had a case. And also the most important thing, Edwin, is the fact that we now have significant recoveries. We now have more that have recovered than we have active cases. And these uh, all put together have uh, been able to uh, give us the confidence at this stage. Uh, and the Honorable Prime Minister said in his statement that uh, these restrictions, um, restrictions that are not completely freedom, there are the certain restrictions remain. Uh, remember that uh, curfew still starts at 10 to 5 in the morning. So it doesn't mean that an extra two hours means that we are completely free of curfew. No, it's not. But it's the ability to be able to allow us a little bit of freedom and uh, you know, you know the, the ability to be able to uh, now, uh, and, and I think it's uh, being stated in the statement that it begins on Monday, uh, specifically for social ga gatherings of, of up to 20 or less. So uh, these are things that have been done because we understand at this moment in time that we in Fiji, we have all these layers and we've been talking about these layers of protection that we have in place. And I think the other great thing is the fact that uh, all along from the beginning till now, the government uh, has been receiving a lot of, um, we've been receiving a lot of uh, uh, criticisms on what we have prepared. Uh, people saying you should be like this nation and that nation and that nation. But it's good to now see that the country is beginning to understand that, uh, you know, we, we have prepared as well as we can. And they're beginning to now understand that those layers are there to actually protect the nation at large. What we also do know is that uh, certain countries that we look up to have pulled back very quickly in their restrictions, completely pulled back, and they've had re-emergence of the disease. This is something that we don't want, but we have uh, working hand in hand with other stakeholders to make sure that there is a staggered uh, lifting of those restrictions that the Honorable Prime Minister has said today. And I think, and, and we continue to say this, Edwin, is that everybody must play their part so even though the restrictions have moved back on the, the day that the curfew will go to 10 p.m., it doesn't mean that we congregate and we cl stay very close to one another. We must continue to practice social distancing. And that is an important part. We must continue to do it. Semi, uh, Fiji Village, uh, sir, you talked about everyone playing their part. My question is what would be the breaking point for the government particularly to reinforce uh, some of these measures that it's relaxing throughout the weekend and even Monday for social gathering, or even moving the curfew back to 8 p.m. I think you said, uh, the Honorable Prime Minister has also said in his statement, we're looking with concern. Um, you know, we are still cautious uh, in terms of what we do. Um, all those uh, layers that we have in place continue to be in place. The, uh, the stationary and also the mobile fever screening, that continues with earnest right throughout the country. 
Uh, also, the testing continues with earnest. Uh, as I've alluded to in one of the earlier statements, we've expanded our ability to test. We now in the, have in the country the ability to do a couple of thousand more tests, and I've been, we've been told that that will be able to hold us back a few months in terms of testing. So we are testing as robustly as we can. We have the, uh, the ability also to, um, you know, to identify uh, those that may have fevers and test them. Uh, we've been doing that with the community fever screening programs that are in place, and so far till now, we haven't been able to, for the test to find another positive case. If what remains at the moment, what we do know, is that the cases that we have are direct contacts or close contacts of imported cases. And we hope it is, but we'll continue with the process that we have in place to make sure uh, that there is no community transmission of the disease. So it is the links that we have in place, and all of us have seen the cluster links that have been put out. They all seem to link back to an important case. That's what we know at the moment. That's why we also have the fever screening programs that are in place right throughout the country to try and pick out if there's an outlier outside of that cluster link based on the important cases. So far, we haven't seen one. Naka, thank you. Bunuwai, if, if all goes well, you don't get any more new uh, cases and we uh, write out the recovery of the ones that you have in isolation now, how long will you then go on with the quarantining of arrivals into the country? The quarantine of arrivals into the country remain. So those are, um, as, as we know at this moment, only those coming back into the country are Fijians that are coming back on the, the, the planes that fly. Uh, on freight planes and then they come back because they're stuck back in the counties where they are. So those are the Fijians coming back. What happens though is that uh, these mechanisms that we have in place remain, it doesn't change. So 14 day in a quarantine facility, test, if that's clear, then they go into 14 days in home isolation. It doesn't change. So I think, uh, and again, as I've said before, this lifting of certain restrictions do not stop the many layers that we have in place. The many layers remain. Um, at the risk of, of sounding hopeful, um, we, can you tell us about WHO protocols with regards to the, the current state, the declaration that we're in now? Uh, can you confirm, are we determined, uh, are we dependent on that, on that uh, state that the WHO is on in terms of returning to some kind of normal state? Look, we, the, um, the, all nations look for some guidance. Uh, I think that's important to understand. And uh, WHO is obviously the leading body that's designated by UN for guidance around this. They have uh, quite a lot of experts that they use. But having said that, every nation, again, is a sovereign nation. We understand the local context and how we want to do things. There are many things that we do that are according to the standards in which WHO has set. There are many is also some areas that are great. And for that, we all countries have been asked to actually make their own decisions around what they want to do. Having said that, last night at midnight, Fiji was invited uh, as one of the only six countries in the world to talk about our COVID-19 response to in a WHO info, um, informative session in which ministers of health from all around the world were listening in. And that is a testament, really, if you think about it. We are the only country from the Western Pacific region that was nominated, one of the only six countries in the world that was nominated to talk about our response then in itself says the robustness and the resilience we have and also the fact that to an extent we're doing what we need to do to be able to protect our nation. Naka. 